The straight stitch actually makes a diagonal spiral design on your basket. Okay, today I want to share a few tips about making baskets. I'm going to focus on the straight stitch, which is a simple and basic stitch for people just learning how to coil pine needle baskets. Of course, you have to have pine needles that are clean and sanitized and dried. You can either use them natural for a lighter color, or you can cook, prepare them with glycerin, which it gives you the darker color. There's already uh, videos on YouTube about that process. The oil in them just gives them a nice feel, and it also gives them a little more flexibility, so they're not as likely to break. Whereas the dried ones, that are just left natural. I mean, they, they have some bend. You can soak them, but I'm not going in a very tight uh, circle, so it'll be fine. I can have some bend to them, but if you're not careful, you can actually break them. Now, I usually keep the tips on um, when I have them bundled, and one basket like this will probably take two bundles to make a basket. There's actually, in this basket, there is 2,040 individual, individual needles. Now, most pine needles have three. One, two, three, unless there's one broken off. Uh, so, counting the individuals, individual needles, there's 2,040 needles in this. Yeah, I count. <laughs> just because I was curious. You can use these, these ends for decoration elements, and there, um, I might do a future video on that once I figure out how to do this. Um, but I'll, I'll take a few out and push them down the end. And I have a cup here where I'm keeping all of my little tips so I don't like fall all over the place. I just cut the ends off, and so I have a pile here of needles that the ends are cut off. Now we use sinew. It's a wax sinew. You can use raffia, but raffia doesn't hold up over time. Sinew is much better. Wax linen is great too, but it's very expensive. So this is a, a very common element. They come in different colors. I have black and brown and this natural color. And I think the, the black and the natural color are my favorite. In this basket, I used black, and then on the sides, I used the natural color, which I thought it was a good contrast against the dark pine needles. You can also do beadwork in your basket. Now this one, I decided to do a small, simple basket, and, and I'm using a different stitch. The amount you want to pull off is one, two arm lengths. That's a good length to start with. And the sinew is kind of flat and it's thick. And you can see that it kind of um, divides. So I actually divide it into three sections. And I just put them in different piles when I'm using it. Okay, I am using a very long steel needle. I really like this needle. It's good except for when I'm doing beadwork. For beadwork, I like to use a shorter needle, or when I get down to the thread, it starts to get short, I, I switch over to the short needle. So I keep a pin cushion with my needles. I have two long uh, uh, steel needles. I think they're, they're made by Osborne, is where they came from. And of course you need scissors. I think that's all the tools. Now I'll get down to the nitty gritty. So here's the basket I'm working on. I'm using what's called the simple stitch or the straight stitch, which actually has sort of a spiral pattern, which looks the same on the reverse side. See how it's got this sort of spiral pattern and they'll be going up at an angle um, up the sides. And so that's pretty cool. Um, I like to start with a wooden base because I just like something in the middle of the basket. I love having the centers and I just cut them. I cut them out of wood and I stained them, them in different colors um, or shapes. And I just pre-drill some holes. You want to keep the holes very uh, close together because when you're starting off, 
you want your stitches fairly close you together. can even buy pre-made centers um, I got I bought this one from somebody from Etsy it's got pre-drilled holes now uh, it had a little bit of wood burning on it which I really liked but it was actually too light and I wanted a little darker so I actually added a stain and then I put a varnish over it so it's got a nice finish but you can get these also from somebody on Etsy and you can also buy other types of uh, centers I'm kind of partial to natural woods we're going to talk about the the straight stitch now when I first started doing my baskets, of course, I searched uh, YouTube looking for tutorials to help me. And uh, my, favorite, uh, to, my favorite teacher is Carol Busto. You can go to her YouTube channel. She has excellent, very short, precise videos, very clear explanations on how to do them. Now, I'd watched some of her videos, and I watched, like, I'll watch a video two or three times. So I said, okay, I, I got it. And then, and then I went to do it by myself, but I wasn't watching the video when I did it. Now, she does hers the opposite direction. Um, she feeds her needles from this side and goes around this way. I work kind of clockwise. I like to feed my needles on this side. Um, I've done a basket the other way and and when I was starting this basket, actually when I started this basket I found myself going to the other way, um, this way, feeding my needles on this side. Um, and well once you start going one direction you can't change so I had to do the whole basket that way. And it was fun because I am familiar with a stitch and that worked good for me. Well, then I would try to start this one and I was like, okay, I need to do this the other way. And I tried and I was having a hard time getting it started um, on this very beginning part. So I wound up, I'm sort of stuck doing it this way. So you've got choices. Um, you, can, I, you can go either way. And personally, I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with going in this direction. So you may find other videos where people go the opposite direction. So, so if you're left-handed, I'm not, I'm right-handed. <laughs> um, but I guess my brain just has a hard time going the other way because I first ba basket I did, I started in this direction. Okay, let's get down to the stitch. I want this stitch to look the same on the inside of the basket as well as the outside of the basket. We see that our lines are going in that direction. We always, I use a straw, actually this is not a straw. I'm an artist, I'm a painter, and I often buy sets of paintbrushes and they come with these little clear cylinders and I, they come in various sizes, so I save them. Hey, hey, now I've got a use for them. So, so they are um, my gauge, so I can decide how, how fat I want this to be. And I use that to keep, keep the gauge, the size of my coil, the same, consistent throughout my basket. And I, when you kind of slide this, now this slide's not real easy, so that means that this is full, so I don't need to put any more needles. And when this becomes loose, that's when you need to insert more needles. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But since we got that good, I'm gonna pull it out a little bit because my stitch is gonna cross over there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, my stitch is going to come over the top and then on the back side or the outside I want my my needle to go in on the left side of the thread but don't do not split the thread and then come out coming through the middle of the coil and then come out the right side so it's left side right side and I'm not it's going through the middle of the coil. This is this is your coil. And so our thread, our threads are going that way, our needle's going this way. Now my needle's kind of big, so I have to be careful. Okay, then we pull that through. And one reason I like going this direction is because I like to hold this and I can and I use my thumb and my finger to help hold and shape like this is going around a curve so I want to and I always like to look on the back side to see what that looks like to make sure that I got my diagonal lines going in a straight row now the next I'm going to show you on this side the next stitch is going to come over to here it's going to come on the left side here and it's going to come out the right side there 
Let me do a couple more. Okay, my needle is starting to get a little loose. Okay, so it's time to put some more needles in. Now, these needles are separated. Um, on these needles, there is a smooth side and then there's a rough side. It's got sort of a, a fold or, or a ridge on one side. So feel for the smooth side. You want the smooth side on the outside of your coil. I also see that right here, I have some short ones right there, and I, and I don't want those sticking out. Sometimes you see these little pieces sticking out, and I usually will go around and when they're sticking out like that, and I'll just kind of cut them off right close to the nearest stitch. But I do try to avoid having those little points um, as much as possible, but you're still going to get some. Okay, so with the rough side down, the smooth side on top, um, right here where I got some short ones, I'm going to slip this in here. Okay, I gotta push down, push down on my needle so I've got space in the straw. And I like the clear uh, cylinder because I can see. And I will slide my needle all the way up into that first stitch so it's right up underneath that stitch that way I don't have any ends sticking out and check the okay now it feels tight it doesn't want to slide very well so that's good I only needed one needle that time but I do need to pull it forward because my stitch is going to cross over that you do have to be careful that when you're coming around here that your threads don't get tangled up in here, so you always have to kind of go around it. And I think that's the why Carol goes the opposite way, but I think it, you run into the same problem that way. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'll put that thread on top of there. Okay, so we go on the left side of the stitch, on the outside, and the right side on the inside, and then we push our needle through. We pull our threads. I think it helps to keep your threads out here so they don't catch on little pieces that might be sticking out. And it's the same thing. You just keep doing the same stitch all the way through the basket and you'll end up with this spiral pattern. It'll be spiral on the inside and a spiral on the outside. Now, when I started this basket, I was I did try the method where you come and split the threads, but I, I really don't like the look of the split threads. I think it looks much nicer um, to not split the thread, to go on the left side, right side, left side, right side. And it just, to me, it looks, it looks cleaner. Let me just do a couple more because you know, repetition is the key. I just gotta put like a few more needles in. Got some short needles on top. I want to kind of hide those short needles. Now, somebody said my, my straw is too long. Uh, it works for me, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, some people like them shorter, but it's clear, so I can see through it, and that's what I like about it. Okay, that's tight. I'm holding it with my thumb and finger in the position I want. Make sure I go to the next stitch. Now, if you ever make a mistake, because I've done it a few times, if you actually make a mistake and jump over here, just take your needle off, go back, and pull the thread back out and redo it. I've had to do that a few times. Left side, right side of the sinew. I'm gonna keep this down, hold that tight. Push my needle all the way through. Now, if you work with a smaller diameter basket, you might want a shorter needle. But I, I really like this, this heavy duty steel needle. It's really nice. Um, plus, if I drop it on the floor, it um, doesn't get lost. And here is the shorter needle. It has, it's a sewing needle has a big hole in it so you can easily put your sinew through it. What I notice is this little ones have a sharper point 
than the steel needles. Because <clears throat> I've, I've poked myself with a needle before and it really doesn't hurt because it's, it's, it does have a very sharp point, but it's a very kind of a blunt end. Okay, just a couple more for repetition's sake. Make sure your thread clears the bundle. Oh, got to always check. Oh, oh, it's a little bit loose. If it's loose, we have to put in another needle or two. Try to slip it all the way under that last stitch. I think I could get another one. Here's got some short ones, so I want to put it to try to hide those short ones. Keep the short little pieces on the inside. Okay, I think I can get one more. Okay, now it fits tight. So, clear the needle sticking out here. Hold it in position with your thumb and finger. And left side, wait a minute. So yeah, I almost made a mistake. It's, nope, I just, that is done. This is the one I'm gonna go to. Okay. Left side through the middle of the coil of the previous row, right side, middle of the coil of the previous row. Almost every time between the stitch, you gotta add needles. Um, you gotta always remember to check, check that you don't want this to slide too too smooth. Okay, left side right side of the sinew, pull our needle through, oops, okay, uh, something just happened, it's caught on a little thing over there, so just grab it like this, oops, pull it back, pull it back through, that's why you gotta, it, sometimes it helps to keep your threads out here. Sometimes I'll, I'll hold it like this when I'm pulling my thread through. And you do have to double check to make sure that you don't have stuff caught where it's not supposed to be catching because there, it does sometimes catch. You know, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to have little things sticking out, but sometimes you get them like there's one right there. So I'm gonna um, clip that right close to the stitch. Those are probably not the best scissors either. <clears throat> okay, so I hope you have fun making a basket and I hope this video was helpful. I will be making more basket tutorial videos as I learn new things. So don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.